Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about why that one scene in Doom Patrol Season 3, Episode 3, Dead Patrol, pissed me off so badly. Like, it had me infuriated when I saw that scene. <clears throat> the episode was perfect until that one stupid little scene. In my opinion, not only ruined that entire episode, but it ruined the entire like series as a whole. So, okay, you should know what scene I'm talking. Well, actually, you don't because I'm uploading this directly after I uploaded the um, episode review, so you don't even know what I'm talking about. So, when they're down in the underworld, Larry and the um, dead detective boys, they're looking for the rest of the team. And so the team shows up and they have the ghouls heads um, in their hands because they got, they kind of got ambushed by them a little bit. They got ambushed by them. And so there was a fight scene off screen. And when I saw that, I was pissed. I was furious. Like I was just raging mad, like, you know, and the reason for that is because one, I've been wanting to see action in this show since season one, and we haven't had none. And two, it shows that they are capable of hand-to-hand -hand combat, and they are capable of being a superhero team, yet they won't become one. See, for those who don't know, in the comic book series, the Doom Patrol is basically the X-Men. And yes, Marvel did steal the concept from them, right down to the wheelchair uh, mentor dude. So, who's the Doom Patrol? The Doom Patrol is like a group of disfigured um, people. They was in some serious accidents and everything, got experimented on, and then they live in a mansion with this guy named the Chief. And the Chief helps them deal with their disabilities and helps them feel like they're normal people. And then they decide to form a superhero group known as the Doom Patrol. I think their leader, God, I can't remember, I don't read combos, but it's been a while since I researched this, like years ago. I, I think the um, Cliff, the robot dude, he is the leader, I believe. And I think now maybe Elastic Girl Rita might be the leader. But um, yeah, so they all had all this bad stuff happen to them. That gave them superpowers. And they decided, you know, since the world is so messed up, because like they feel like they're messed up. They feel like they're outcasts. And they get ridiculed for it. So they hide away in this mansion. But then when they see the world's in danger and stuff like that, they decide to jump into action and go save the day. And so, like, because of that, they're a little bit more respected, but they're still feared and stuff. Similar to, like I said, the X-Men. So the doom patrol actually first appeared live action on screen in titan season one it was an episode where like beast boy took raven back to the manica he was living with them why because in the comic books and in the cartoon series beast boy is a member of the doom patrol he later upgrades and leaves them and joins the titans and so when we saw Beast Boy live with them, okay, like, cool, comic book accurate, stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? And then, when they appeared, that was kind of like a backdoor pilot. And so many fans loved that episode from the rest of the Titans episode, because Titans, at that time, was very diverse, um, and it, uh, controversial, and it di divided the fan base. And so a lot of fans really loved that episode. And so they decided that they were gonna, that was the backdoor pilot. It was successful and they were going to make their own spinoff series. And they did. And so a lot of people who watched Doom Patrol, they were extremely happy with this show. Because like I said before, Titans had like crossed the line in a way that fans just didn't know how to feel. And so with Doom Patrol, it was a very different show it didn't rely on action whatsoever like um titans did. Which, by the way titans action is good don't get me wrong but 
it relied more on human emotions, um, empathy, you know, true feelings and stuff. It had so much emotion in the show that people just fell in love with it. And the group is so quirky and everything. Like, they're just so strange and people love it. Like, I believe at the end of season one, after they defeated, like, the, the evil dude, which I forgot how they defeated him. But, um, it wasn't through pure action or nothing like that. They just started, like, dancing in the front. And they just started dancing and stuff. I, I can't remember where they were dancing at, but I'm pretty sure they was dancing. Then, in that one crossover event that the CW had, the Crisis on Infinite Earths, there was a cameo by the Doom Patrol. And that's all it was, a cameo. And we see them in the front yard, and they're just dancing like it's nobody's business. Like, they're so happy because they live so far away from everybody else. Nobody can see them. And they're just so happy with their lives now because they're learning to accept themselves. And something good has probably happened. So they're just dancing like it's nobody's business. Now, that scene was a deleted scene from season one. They just didn't have time to show it. Like, this is who this group is. They're like this quirky group. But then one thing that started bugging people was that we fans were just waiting and anticipating, okay, well, when are they going to be a superhero group? Like, you know, we're like, we know it's coming. Like, we know it's coming because it's like they're starting to accept themselves in the first season. And then Cliff, he's all like, yo, man, we got all these powers and everything and, and we're freaks. And we should be like whooping on bad guys and everything. And there's a major bad guy right there. And um, and I think there's like a talking cockroach or something like that. We should like whoop on them and crap like that. And so like, and they see that this one major bad guy is majorly bad and is going to do a whole lot of bad stuff. And so they're just like, you know, uh, he's all like, you know, we should do this. But the team's all like, nah, we hate ourselves and we don't want nobody to look at us. And so Cliff was very adamant about like being a superhero and stuff. There was even a tease in one episode, kind of like a hallucination thing, where we see them in their extremely classic Doom Patrol costume. I'm thinking to myself, yes, it finally happened and everything. They're going to become that team. But it was all just a tease. And then so they get shrunk down in season one. At the end of season one and then season two, when they get back to normal size, they're back to just being who they always are. They're back to just being a bunch of disfigured people who are just trying to cope in life and everything. But then Rita in the second season, she's very adamant about being a superhero. And so she's practicing how to control her powers and everything. She has the ability of like Mr. Fantastic. But they don't really show that on the show. They just show her getting depressed and turn to a big blob. And so she's basically just the blob lady and she's referenced as so. And this one, there are times where she is able to stretch her arms out. And I think she tries to stop a bank robbery one time, but I think she messes up or something like that. But then she has this cool hallucination where she is kind of like a superhero from back in the day. And so after all that in this new season now she don't want to be a superhero no more and also the team don't want to be one and so then we have cyborg and cyborg he um he started off the season the first season like being a superhero well doing like stopping little crimes here and there like he was well known for being like this vigilante type person then he joins the doom patrol and he doesn't do that no more we will occasionally see him go on like a side mission by himself, but it's nothing major and everything. And even in season three, he let that one girl go because he's in love with her and stuff. But he doesn't even do the superhero thing no more. And so he, because he's going through all that typical emotional Doom Patrol stuff. But he has the ability to be a superhero. He has all this cool tech that we never get to see because the show budget doesn't allow for that. So he just wears a hoodie all the time. And, um... So yeah, and it's like, so they all have the ability to be a superhero team. You know, Cliff, he has the super strength because he's a robot. Rita, she has the ability to stretch her body out and do all kind of like amazing things. Kind of like Mr. Fantastic. Crazy Jane has, I think like 99 different personalities. And um, 
they all have their own unique superpower and stuff. And then we have Cyborg, who has all this mechanical tech at his disposal. And I think that's it. I think it's a duck. Oh, and Larry, he um has the negative force thing inside him, and it can do some amazing stuff to stop people. But yet they don't do that. And I've just been wondering. Well, okay, so I'm assuming this is just the show where it's just a dramatic, um, emotional show that has superheroes from the comic books in it, but they're not superheroes. So I'm all like, okay, whatever. I'm fine with that. I've made my peace. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're not going to turn them into a superhero team, then that should be it and stop teasing it. Just let them be a bunch of, like, um, normal people who are different and have these superpowers and like they just going through the motions just let that be that type of show let it be a drama you know let it be like a soap opera and stuff but then now in season three they keep teasing once again them being superheroes and i'm just like crap don't do this man like stop playing with our emotions either you're gonna make them a superhero team or you're not gonna make them a superhero team and then next thing you know they're dead in the underworld and they kill a bunch of demons and decapitate their heads and it's just kind of like well clearly they can't fight <laughs> you know and it's like clearly they know when they're in danger to you know whoop some butt and everything and it's just like well if they can do that there when their lives are in danger then what about when everybody else's life's in danger and so it shows that they have the capability of being superheroes and at times wanting to be superheroes because three out of five of the team members, you know, want to be superheroes at different point in time. So it's just like, stop teasing us, man. And that's what infuriated the crap out of me. I made my peace with this show and accepted it for what it is. It's a quirky drama and everything. And now, once again, they, they're teasing us with this superhero crap. They teased us in the beginning of that second episode this season. I forget their name. The evil or something with the brain and the gorilla dude. Which, by the way, the gorilla dude CGI was terrible. Just make a monkey suit, man. God. And it's like they're teasing us with their main super villain team from the comic book. I mean, a super villain team from the comic book. Why in the, like every season, every stinking season, they tease us with their major like superhero, uh, super villain like people from the comic books, and then they have them in this show and they have them do evil stuff only for them to be defeated with the kindness of love. I'm just like, no. You know, Candle Dude got taken out by the kindness of love. Um that one dude from the first season got taken out by the kindness of empathy and all that other crap. And it's like the um, evil people just got taken out by Chief in the first incarnation of the Doom Patrol. I don't even remember there being a first. I thought these people were supposed to be the first. See, it's just like Titans, man. You assume they're supposed to be the first, but they're not. And then it's just like, you know, I made my peace. So stop teasing. And that's why that one scene pissed me off so much. Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.